Wait, the kids do what in Cocaine Bear? You'll never guess how far the filmmakers were willing to go to elicit every last gasp from the audience. Dee Dee and Henry are two of the handful of characters who end up dealing with the titular beast. Dee Dee is a bit of a rebel, but only because her mom, Sari, changed their weekend plans to hang out with her new boyfriend. In protest, Dee Dee recruits her best friend to hike through the forest and spray paint a waterfall. As Henry snarkily points out, it's a thinly veiled attempt to win back her mom's attention. Dee Dee hopes that when Sari realizes she's run off by herself, she'll feel bad about canceling. But things take a turn when the two kids discover a package of cocaine and get attacked by a bear. You heard the title, right? This isn't just any bear. It's a bear with a drug problem. And even though it's coke, she's got a bad case of the munchies. A bear did cocaine! This is a bear who fully delivers in the title of the film by spending 95 minutes viciously mauling an ensemble of random unfortunates who happen to be wandering her forest. Seeing the dangerously high apex predator cross paths with two innocent children might seem a bit dark for the coked-up comedy, but it's preceded by one of the funniest scenes in the movie. However, this moment is also pretty messed up, and director Elizabeth Banks says it was definitely controversial when they were putting the movie together. Before the titular cocaine bear even enters their lives, Dee Dee and Henry stumble across trouble in the form of a big brick of cocaine. Henry tries to play it cool, insisting he's done the drug a million times before. When Dee Dee calls his bluff and asks how exactly you do cocaine, Henry tells her that you're supposed to eat it, and a standard dose is about a tablespoon. Dee Dee uses the blade of a knife to scoop up a mouthful of cocaine before daring Henry to follow suit. It's both hilarious and horrifying to watch, and that's the point. Banks told Variety, it was definitely controversial. There were conversations about, should we age up these characters? But Banks and her team quickly decided that altering the characters would ruin the moment. She elaborated, we all kind of held hands and we were like, guys, they've got to be 12. It's their innocence being tested. That's what was interesting to me about that scene. Watching two kids handle cocaine is an excellent movie theater moment, towing the line between horror and hilarity to evoke groans, gasps, and lots of nervous laughter. Hey! That's inappropriate. People have been cringing away from the rampant teen drug use and euphoria for years, especially because it doesn't shy away from the painful impact of addiction. Cocaine Bear capitalizes on that inherent discomfort, but takes it to a new extreme. Producer Christopher Miller added, It's the naivete of the kids that makes it okay. It's what makes it so tense and funny. It doesn't work if they're teenagers. Pushing the envelope is the point of Cocaine Bear, according to executive producer Phil Lord. He said, it has to be a proposition that you haven't seen before. It has to feel a little bit transgressive, like this is too naughty to watch at home. If it helps, the scene is also explicitly played for laughs. Both kids immediately spit the drug out in disgust. In the original script for Cocaine Bear, the movie opened with this scene, two middle schoolers daring each other to eat cocaine. But when Banks came on as director, the opening became a Matthew Reese cameo, in which drug smuggler Andrew C. Thornton II drops cocaine out of a plane kickstarting the chain of events that leads to Dee Dee and Henry's illegal taste test. As for what the kids were actually eating, Banks told Insider, It was mostly sugar, but we did add a little salt because we wanted their reaction to be as real as possible, and I felt if we fed these kids just sugar, I don't think they are going to think it tastes bad. Drugs are no laughing matter. Except for the shot where the bear does a line of coke off a severed leg, of course. And Henry and Dee Dee definitely learned that the hard way. It's difficult to imagine them being pumped about recreational drug use after seeing a man torn to shreds by an extremely coked-up bear. Banks also made sure to point out that the same lesson was made clear to the young actors, along with pretty much anyone who has seen the movie. She told Insider, This movie is not pro-drug. That's obvious. We are not glorifying drugs in this film. So the kids got that. They weren't interested in it, and their parents were there the whole time. They were well-supervised. 